Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to a new video series that I'm very excited about called House Worship. Um, this is born out of the crazy times that we're in as we're all stuck at home. Many of our jobs are disappearing as musicians. Our gigs are gone. Our financial security may be gone. Um, and I just feel like God has called me to step out and uh, to try and provide encouragement as well as with the support of my brother-in-law, Seth Country and Nate Country and my wife, Hannah, who are all worship leaders. We want to provide some worship for you guys to just get together and to worship our Lord. And if you're a church out there who can't record high quality uh, worship, we welcome you to download it in the description and use it for your own church's live streams and messages. We just want to bring encouragement and something you know, special, something good out of this time. And uh, that's what house worship is all about. So let's get started. We're so pumped uh, to have you all here in our dining room. Uh, got my fam with me, and uh, we're going to sing some worship uh, this morning. And uh, we love you all. Even though we can't meet together in person, we're excited to be able to have the technology to meet together uh, still in our house. So we love you all. Come on in. Let's worship together. Here we go.
This lockdown stuff has, you know, happened in our lives, and just the the tragedy that's going on. You know, for a lot of us, it was easy to be distracted and to pay attention to other things. But I really believe that God is bringing an awareness of His presence to the church, to us personally, to our families, and I believe even to the world. And um, and that's one of the greatest things that we can be aware of is God with us. He is with you right where you are. He will never leave you or forsake you. And it's his power that we really need right now. It's his love. It's the fruit that comes from the spirit and the presence of God. So let's just invite right now the Holy Spirit to fill up the rooms that we're in, to fill up our hearts, to surround our families, to protect us. And so just in confidence, let's sing this song together. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've 
tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome come to
Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, we invite you right now in this moment to quiet our hearts, to quiet our thoughts. We invite you to have your way in our lives and just fill up all of the, these atmospheres. Let your presence be what we're aware of right now, what you're saying, what you're teaching us. God, help us to hear your voice in the quiet. We love you. We desire your kingdom to come and your will to be done. Thank you that we can gather like this and still experience one spirit. We love you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm very thankful that you, you know, you tuned into this. You're, you're watching this right now. And uh, I, I don't know if you can tell how nervous I am, but I, I normally talk to cameras all the time, but I don't normally talk to cameras in a like preachy, pastory kind of way, which I'm by no means a pastor and I'm not going to get super theological on you here. Um, I am just going to share a little bit about my faith, about some scriptures that I believe really pertain to this situation and uh, hopefully bring a little bit of encouragement to, to your life and to your family's lives. And um, a, a little bit about me, if you don't know, is I am married and I have two kids and I just had a baby. So um, all of this uh, financial stuff, all my you know gigs disappearing and revenue disappearing and the way to pay the bills disappearing is is pretty uh, you know not exactly ideal, uh, especially just having a baby and having a, a three year old and having a wife. It's uh, it's a lot, and I'm sure many of you are in those situations as well out there. And so um, one of the things like the the verse that is just just rings true in my head all the time. Um, is Jeremiah 29 11, which is going to be like the, the main focal point of this message. It's, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And that's like the first part. That's the part that everybody knows. And that is like, it's, it's like a motto ringing true in the back of my mind, because the truth is God is not... You know, this is not to, to destroy your life. This is not to ruin everything. Um, and it's it may not be easy, but it is something that you can prosper in. And that's that's what's really like, that's hard to fathom when you think about like prosper. You know, that means financially, right? That means like I'm going to get my Lamborghini and I'm going to be able to live in a big house. Like that's what prosper means, right? But prosper doesn't just mean financially. And that's that's something that I've really had to come to terms with because especially, you know, you think like you work really hard and you're building something and you think that, you know, one day it'll just, you know, snowball and then everything will be easy. Uh, but that's not necessarily the case and life wasn't necessarily meant to be easy. Um, you don't grow when it's easy. And I really believe that this time, if you approach it correctly, can be so, so powerful in your life because this is a hard time for sure, especially if you're a musician and all your money just disappeared, all your gigs just disappeared. Like, what are you going to do? You know, that's that's not something that just fixes itself, especially when we may be here for a month or two months or whatever before we get to go back to work and gigs start happening again. And so um, it could be even longer than that. And that's where you have to believe that first off, God is there to prosper you, but it doesn't necessarily just mean financially. This is a time in your life where you can prosper yourself in other ways. Uh, the amount of extra time that I've spent with my family, like I, I spend a lot of time with my family, but I get to spend even more time with my family. And that right there is um, a prosperous thing because this is, you know, in my, my kids' lives, these are really important moments as my, my three-year-old is starting to grow up and, you know, he's going to start remembering these days in his life. And this may be my last child. I don't know. I could have more children, but um, to get to see those moments in my daughter's life even more than I would normally, because um, I went from like taking off work to hang out with the baby to work disappearing. So now I still just get to hang out with my baby, you know, and that's something that that's a positive spin that you can put on this situation. And um, for those of you that don't have a family, for those of you who, you know, are trying to figure out how it is that you're, what are you supposed to do in this time? Like, this is a time where you can prosper in another way. You can learn a new skill. You can, 
um, you can figure out something that can change the course of your life going forward. Uh, I, I talk about this a lot because um, to me it's an important thing because it's how I almost survive. You know, it's, it's what I've built is my social media presence. And as a musician out there, now you're at home, well, maybe it's time to start looking at your social media presence. Now it's time to maybe start making some networking connections or to, to work on your recording skills or to, um, you know, figure out another trade. And, and that brings me to the, the other verse that I wanted to focus on today, and that's Philippians 4.19. Um, and it says, And my God will meet all of your needs according to the riches of his glory. And that verse in itself... Um, brings a lot. It's a powerful verse too, because needs is not wants. You know, we're sitting here and we want to go to the movies or we want to go out to eat or we want to buy a new car or we, but that doesn't necessarily, that's not a need. You know, like I can sit upstairs with some ramen and my family and have a roof over my head and that those are needs that are met. And so, um, the way that God supplies those needs isn't necessarily the way that you want. And that's, that's like the, the bridge between this is a terrible time and I don't, all my money's disappearing and my gigs are gone to this is a time where I can just rejoice in the moment and know that I'm taken care of because him meeting those needs is not necessarily meeting those needs through drumming. It's not necessarily meeting those needs through being a musician or through the exact career that you desire for your moment because if you just do what you want and what you think is easy, like that's, that's not going to grow you. That is just going to like, you know, you're going to, you're going to let that become your idol. You're going to let that become your focus in life. And so this is an amazing moment, um, to just reiterate the fact that, that God is above all and it doesn't matter what you're doing. What matters is that he's providing for your needs. And, uh, an example in my life is that like, you know, I, I dreamed of being a drummer my whole life and I started to become, you know, the, the social media thing and creating the videos and, uh, but there's many times and this time included where that money dries up, that being a drummer thing just isn't working. And so in this time I've, I've found other ways to create revenue and, um, I've, you know, I've been working as an electrician. I've been working at, I've been installing flooring in people's houses. Like that, that kind of like situation where you're able to, to kind of learn new skills and to help out with other places, or, you know, maybe you go get a job at Walmart for a little bit. Like that opportunity is not what you want, but it is your need being met. And so if you think of yourself as too proud or too like, you know, this is what I do. I'm not going to do anything else. Well, then your needs might not be met because you're missing out on the opportunity to go cut somebody's lawn or to go, you know, clean up some brush because there are people out there that still have expendable income and there's people out there that you can potentially earn money for working for. And so God is going to meet those needs, but it might not be the way that you think. And God is going to prosper you, but it might not be the way that you think. And that is the difference between looking at this as a terrible crisis and, you know, maybe my business is going to go under. Well, maybe that's not the plan that God has for you. You know, I wanted to be a rock star. Like I was like, I want to play in a big rock band. And, uh, as I went forward in life, I kept watching like these opportunities disappear or this, like be, I'll be like, Oh man, I'm going to go do this huge concert. And then it doesn't happen. It's like, you can set all of your, your desires on reaching that goal that you have for yourself, or you can believe that God's plans for your life are better than your own plans. And, um, I mean, by no means am I saying that, uh, you, God doesn't what, want what you want for your life. He wants to fulfill your dreams and to create a, a life that is fulfilling. But at the end of the day, you can be fulfilled in more ways than you think. Um, I'm more fulfilled now as a dad and as a husband, um, you know, creating videos in my basement than I would be playing shows on the road. Um, and, you know, I, I did some touring and it just, it wasn't what I loved, even if that's what can provide for the bills, you know? And so you, you have to, you have to see what God has for you as his plans are going to be greater than your plans. And when you just come into it and you just trust him and you just believe him and you just know 
that this coronavirus thing is not the end of the world. It's not, you know, if your business fails or if you have to take up another job or you, um, you know, you can't do what you've been dreaming of doing. That doesn't necessarily mean that life is over. You know, God has different plans and God's going to see us through this. He's going to see us to that next step. And as my brother Seth was saying, um, you like this is the perfect time to get our focus back on him to realize like we have this time to just sit down and to just enjoy the earth that he has provided for us and not be distracted by all the things that that distract us and so um i i hope that those verses that you can just take those and you can just repeat them back to yourselves every day anytime you question like, what am I going to do? I don't know if I can pay that bill yet, you know? You have to know that my God will meet all of your needs and that, uh, you know, he will prosper you. His plans are not to harm you. And the rest of that verse, um, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. And to me... This coronavirus, this stuck in your house is your captivity and you call on him, you seek back to him, you seek his plans in your life, you put him first in your life and he will answer you, he will find you, you pray to him and he will be there and he will prosper you and he will uh, meet your needs and that's what I'm believing on, that is what I'm sticking to um, every day when I look at my bank account and I think, hmm, that's not going to pay the bills. And then the next opportunity arises, and it's not the same thing that I thought it would be, you know. But God provides and meets your needs. And so I just pray that you take those verses and you just you focus on them and you believe with me and you pray with me that God is going to use this for good, not just in your life, not just in my life, but in so many people's lives. And uh, today I just want to end uh, and pray with you guys and then finish out with another awesome song uh, that I really hope just brings that positivity to, to your life, that encouragement, and uh, thank you so much again for tuning in. So uh, let's pray together. Dear God, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for giving me the, uh, the courage to, to step out in front of this camera here and to, uh, to just say what you laid on my heart, Lord, and I just pray that it touches somebody out there and it helps somebody out there, and um, I just pray that we, we're able to keep each other safe in this time, that we're able to um, to encourage each other and to help each other. Use this opportunity to be a blessing in someone's life. Uh, you know, if you have that expendable income, drop off a little bit with somebody who doesn't, Lord. Continue to, to bless others. Continue to give to others. Continue to be helpful to the people around you and know that you, you cannot give too much. You cannot help too much. That's never going to be a negative thing. And the Lord will see that and bless that. And We thank you so much for you continuing to provide our needs and continuing to prosper us, not just financially, but in our relationships, in our marriages, with our kids, um, in our careers, and in the future, Lord. Help us to become better people through this um, time. And uh, we just thank you for all that you're doing. And uh, we pray that we worship you together with this next song. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, Lord turn his face toward you.
generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children